All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today we are fresh off getting done with modifying our impeller, supercharged this machine. Now we are going to tune it up and make sure it's good to go for the upcoming snow or upcoming season. Um, I'm going to give you a couple tips on how to winterize it as well. Um, but for the most part, um, have the machine running for about 10 minutes so we get the oil nice and hot so we're able to drain it in an efficient manner. So uh, what I like to do, because I have a lip on the garage, I like to utilize that. Alright, so let me get the snowblower up, and we'll start draining the oil. Alright guys, dipstick out. So we have a nice flow. Get you guys out of the way. And then we have our drain plug right here. Now what's really cool about this, is that if you guys ever done snowblow oil changes before, sometimes this twists out too. You have to put a vice grip on there. Look what Husqvarna did. They put a nice smooth edge so you could slide a wrench and uh, you don't have to worry about chewing up your dipstick for a sec. That's got good right there. Alright, so we're just going to use a 5 eighths socket, like so, here, okay, and then we're going to take our adjustable wrench and we're going to make it nice and tight till it's flat, so it doesn't slip. Because it's on a cocky angle, there we go. See how now we're nice and flat and it's gripping? See that? It's not even moving yet. Right, nice and loose. Move the snow all out just a little bit. And that's it. Get finished the rest off by here. Now even though the oil is clean, you still should be changing it anyway. Oil does have a shelf life. Excuse me, I'm sick. Can you believe it in the, wind, in the middle of summer or spring? I'm battling a fever in a sore throat. Ridiculous. Just gonna let that drain out. I'm gonna get my oil. Oops. Yeah. Tilt it back a little bit. This thing said 16 ounces. For some reason, it looks a lot more than 16 ounces. Remember, I said it did look overfilled. Just looking to see if I smell gas, which would be a bad football. You are good to go. So we'll tip it over like so. This is not hurting the end. This is not hurting the machine one bit in this position. We'll let the oil get nice and drip, drip, drip. All right, now that the oil is completely drained out, we'll bring it back up. We'll stick our uh, the cap. Remember, we never moved our wrench. 
So we're just going to tighten this back up. That's it, nice and slow. That's it. This is really crazy. Why did somebody change the oil and they just didn't miss it? This thing was leaky anyway, but no, still, I just. It's nice and tight. Alright. So, this engine calls for 16 ounces. I use Royal Purple. You can use whatever you want. Just make sure it's 30 weight, 5W30. Okay, I buy it in bulk, like so. I put it into a smaller jug. Now there's a multitude of reasons why Royal Purple is good. And I feel it's the best. I use it in everything, except the lawnmowers. Um, but the reason why I believe in Royal Purple is that my buddy uses Royal Purple well before me. I just didn't believe in it or believe him. 16 ounces, pink cup from Home Depot. Look we'll at this on a nice even surface. All right, so anyway, so he had this motorcycle and uh, we were not, he lost his dream car in the middle of riding. So the motorcycle wasn't worth a tow or the inconvenience of trying to get somebody to get him and his bike home. So he just said, screw it. I'm going to ride. And whatever happens, happens. So, he rode the bike for almost a half hour home with no drain plug, no oil, and the bike did not lock up. Order the drain plug, put more royal purple in there, fresh royal purple, and he's still riding the bike to this day. So guess what? If that story didn't sell you, I don't know what to tell you. That story definitely sold me. Now here, where I am in Long Island, New York, we don't get a lot of snow. I mean, obviously, you know, every place we go has their blizzards and stuff like that, which we've had our fair share of blizzards. But we don't get a ridiculous amount of snow compared to, like, uh, Michigan, Canada, you know, a lot of the colder states. So, but when we do get snow, for the most part, it sucks, except for last year. So it's always good to have a snowball. So the reason why I use Royal Purple is because we don't get to use this a lot. So might as well put the best of the best. All right, got it in. Let's get this mamma jam out because we got to run this thing. We have to check the oil. Yeah, let's prime this beam. On. On. I know we have this running, so maybe. The choke. That's it, that's all we needed. And now we just gotta check the dips. Our dipstick. We're going to clean the oil. And check. Now, I could have swore this thing said 20 ounces, but on the internet it said 16, as you can see, we're low. So, screw what the internet said. It's 20. The good thing we checked. So, we're going to put 20 ounces. All right, now that we have 20 ounces of oil in the machine, now we have to adjust the height of the skid shoes. Right? Paint stick, 
See how thick this is? That's what I usually do. Just set that on there. And this should be 13 or a half inch on the side of the skid chip. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. We're just gonna loosen these up. Let me see how it drops down. That's it. Remember, we're supporting from the back too, because these are carriage bolts as well. Now I'm just doing a little bit so I know the carriage bolt is in, and now I just hold it down. That's it. And the same thing for the other side. I'll bring you over here. We'll kick you out of the way. Same thing. Just set the height of the skid shoes. If you want to go lower, that's fine. But I feel like this is a pretty good standard height. If you want to see, if you want to see pavement when you blow snow, then you're nuts. If that's just me personally. You're gonna be going through scraper, scraper balls. You're gonna be damaging your old house. It's really not worth it. All right, that's it. We're done. Next, we're gonna put the machine in the service position. We're going to take a peek underneath the hood. Go over your components of your machine. So what I usually like to do is like to put this knee mat down so I don't scrape the machine when I tilt it up. Right. Turn the gas off so it doesn't go through the carburetor. Right here is the surface position. See this right here? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, maybe just these four. Yep. And now we can unveil the internals of the machine. Yep, three eighths. Walk in for a bracket. Gonna buzz these guys right off. Put those aside. Cover just slides. Out. Oh, that's cool. Folds out. Now we have our internals of the machine. See this here? This is what your wheels spin on. This is your wheel sprocket. This is your friction disc. This is what I describe to people. This is like a clutch setup. This is your clutch basically. And this wears down over time. So you either have to adjust it over time or replace it. So what happens is, is that this is your belt spinning. Depending on your speed is where this gear is. And then you see this spinning? That controls all four. So what I like to do is I like to grease here, move it back and forth, and I like to grease the sprocket here too as well. Right, so just have my pneumatic grease gun, Lincoln. Was that like the presser running? Squeeze the trigger, and that's it. You don't want to you don't want to get it on here, because then the clutch is very slippery. Just work it. I like my excess here on the sprocket. I'll spin the wheel. See how I'm turning the wheel? Everything shifts. That's exactly what we want. Now we're going to move 
walk from side to side. So that so it's either to it itself and you just put more here. And that's it. Now what I also like to do, because unfortunately down the line, it's going to happen, you're gonna to have to pull these off one day. So I like to pull the tires off and grease the shafts. This cotter pin comes out, this bolt comes out, and that slides right off. Now it only does that now because it's literally a brand new machine, but as time goes on, this is gonna rock. And guess what? No! Uh, I'm just gonna blow a shot of me. This is gonna rust. And the wheels are going to be frozen. And you are going to regret not doing this. And the mechanic is going to hate you too. And most likely charge you an extra fee. This wheel is frozen. Because time is money. By just doing that quick, simple little step, you save yourself a couple of bucks. Remember, preventative maintenance. This is going to line up here in the hole. And just stick it back in. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. Now these are called winch pens. Out of here. Pull that out, slide out, and that's it. That's it. Spread this around. Up the middle. That's it. No, while we have the wheels off, let's get a rag to clean this up. Remember, fingers crossed, this might be sold tomorrow. We can turn the full compressor, we're done for now. Easy. So we'll just. I'll just clean this up. Oh, look at this brand new nail. All over again. Brand new nail. Now the last part to lube up with grease is our sprocket. Now, anything that's metal on metal, I like to grease up. Obviously it keeps the friction down. So let's do it. So just use the teeth to our advantage. That's it. Alright, see that? And just spin the wheel. Don't spin it fast because then remember it's gonna it might spray it. So just rotate it around. You see how it's going through the sprocket. Take the excess grease off the side here and reapply it. Alright, I like to see grease on every tooth. So yeah. And that should be it. See that? Get a nice close up. Yeah. Okay, 
get you guys close. You see that? On every sprocket. See the blue? That's it. Just take the excess grease again. Put it on the teeth. And that is it. Right, let me get my gloves off. Now when you apply anti-seize, you just want to get it on the tip of the threads. Because as you tighten it down, it'll work its way through the rest of the hardware, through the pinch. And that's it. You are good to go. As you guys see, I'm starting these by hand because I do not want to strip anything, which is very moy and cortante. Start everything by hand, please. Do not go down with the gun. Now I said this a couple of times throughout the video, it's just a constant reminder. That's it. Our fingerprints off of everything. Oh, and if you get any seeds on your hands, try not to touch anything because it spreads like wildfire. My wife gets very upset when I use it, and I get it on clothes. Just right there. Okay. Now we have our cables here. You could use white lithium grease. I don't like to use white lithium grease because it leaves like a haze. And that haze really, really bothers me. So now we're just going to go over all the multiple joints on this machine. Wherever we have movement, we are going to put penetrating oil. So you see how we have movement here? A little bit, a little bit there, that's movement. Movement on the cables, just check your adjustment on the cables. See the cable goes in and out here, a little movement there. Cable goes in there too. Alright, just right here in the handle. Just a little bit, nothing crazy. Alright. I'm going to take the machine down again. Where else do we have movement? We did there, we got there. Uh, and you know what? We'll do some something on the spring. This here, this is the cable. Now remember, if you guys remember when we took this off, it just rotates on that plastic base. So we'll we'll put some lube there. This is where it rotates the chute. So we'll get some in there. There's another pivot point inside there. And basically, you know, that's a wrap. And then, oh yeah, tire pressure. Everybody has their variances of tire pressure. I run it at full PSI because I run tire tunes. So I want that grip. So obviously, on the tire, it's going to tell you 20 PSI. And that's what you want to inflate it to. Now, when winterizing this machine, very important, very important. Run this thing out of gas. Please run it out of gas. Gas is cheap. Don't be that maroon that says, I'm going to keep the gas thing. And run it every couple of minutes, run it every couple of months, put stabilizer in there. Just run it bone dry. I don't give a hoot how anybody says, please run it bone dry. Now, in order to get all the gas out, we're going to run this thing bone dry. Or you're going to drain it out. I run it dry. All right? You see the bottom of this car? That's a 10 millimeter nut. You drop that 10 millimeter nut after it's run dry, and all the gas that's left in the bowl will come out. And therefore, there is no gas left in the system. And you are guaranteed, guaranteed, to have this thing run next year. No problem. Put gas in it, fire right up. Oh, 
And one more thing else. If you guys ever read the owner's manual, which I know nobody does, they tell you when you're done putting it, when you're done using it for the year and you do your final tune-up, pull the spark plug out. Take a cap of oil or a little bit of penetrating oil and squirt it down the hole and leave it. Put the spark plug back in there. Put the boot back on. Do not run the machine. Let that oil sit in the cylinder. It'll keep the, it'll keep the rings from freezing up. It'll be less harsh your first start when you uh, take it out of storage for the f when snow is on the way. Now what I like to do also as well is I'm a little anal is I also like to pull a spark plug out put some oil down there again because you know oil will oil will go down put the spark plug back in I actually keep the machine on off or pull the key out and I just pull nice and slow and I make sure that piston's working nice and easy a couple times and then I'll start the machine. Alright? Now when we're checking for belts, see how this has two adjustments? One here and one here. Obviously we don't we can't really adjust the belt because it's not necessary. This is a drastic, drastic change in adjustment, and we know that we definitely don't need it. The drive belt has no adjustment on the drive belt. You basically have to check the adjustment on the cables, which it's a brand new machine, you don't have to do anything to it. So that is it. I basically just got to clean this up because remember I modified the impeller. I'm going to throw some paint here. And this is a wrap. Remember, fingers crossed, hopefully this sells tomorrow. So anyway, I will put some specs in the uh, description. So in case you guys lost that in translation, you guys can go down to the description and check the, some of the tools I used. Uh, the 20 ounces, the 20 ounces, 20 ounces, 20 ounces, 20 ounces of 5W30 weight oil of your choice. I use oil purple, full synthetic. All right? So we'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Remember, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys later.